Have you ever wondered who were the early African American leaders that began the fight for freedom in the 1700s? As we delve into the 18th century, we're transported to a time of struggle and resistance, especially for African descended individuals in Boston and the surrounding areas. These individuals were not simply bystanders in the unfolding drama of freedom. They were front and center, shaping ideas of liberty and equality, challenging the chains that bound them, and daring to dream of a world where they were seen as equals. Their stories are interwoven into the very fabric of American history, testaments to their courage and resilience. The 18th century Massachusetts was a hotbed of revolutionary ideas and actions. As the winds of change blew across the Atlantic, they also stirred the hearts and minds of those who had been subjected to the harshest of human conditions, slavery. But these individuals, these pioneers of freedom, did not simply accept their fate. They questioned, they challenged, they resisted, and in doing so they began to shape a new narrative of freedom, one that recognized their humanity and their rights. We see their footprints in the Revolutionary War, a war fought for the ideals of freedom and liberty. These African descended individuals didn't just sit on the sidelines, they were active participants, taking up arms and standing shoulder to shoulder with their fellow revolutionaries. These early freedom fighters were not just challenging the oppressive institution of slavery, but were also actively partaking in the Revolutionary War. They were the dawn of a new era, the heralds of change, the first voices in the course that would grow to become a resounding call for freedom and equality. Uh, among the numerous brave hearts, figures like Crispus Attucks, Prince Hall, and Phyllis Wheatley stand out. These individuals, each unique in their approach, left indelible marks on the fabric of history. Crispus Attucks, a man of African and Native American descent, was the first martyr of the American Revolution. On that fateful day in March 1770, Attucks was the first to fall during the Boston Massacre, a violent confrontation between British soldiers and Bostonians. His sacrifice lit the fuse of revolution, making him a symbol of resistance and a beacon of courage for those who would fight for freedom and equality. Prince Hall, a tireless advocate for abolition, was a man of many firsts. As a free African American in the late 18th century, he faced numerous challenges, yet he never wavered in his commitment to the cause of freedom. He championed the education of African American children understanding that knowledge was a powerful tool in the fight against oppression. Hall founded the first African-American Masonic Lodge, which became a platform for him to further advocate for abolition and civil rights. His efforts were instrumental in the early anti-slavery movement. Phyllis Wheatley, meanwhile, used the power of her words to challenge the perceptions of African people. She was the first African-American woman to publish a book of poetry, proving that intellect and creativity were not determined by skin color. Her poetry? filled with themes of freedom and equality, served as a powerful rebuttal to the stereotypes and prejudices of her time. She demonstrated that African Americans were not just capable of intellectual pursuits, but could excel in them. Their relentless fight against injustice laid the groundwork for the early anti-slavery movement. Each of these figures, in their own way, challenged the oppressive systems of their time and paved the way for the fight for freedom and equality. The African American community's deep roots in Boston are evident in landmarks like the Pinckney Street House and the Long Wharf. These landmarks serve as silent witnesses to the struggles and triumphs of the African American community, each brick and stone telling a story of resilience and courage. Let's start with the Long Wharf, a bustling hub that was once the heart of the city's maritime trade. But it also has a darker history. It was here that slave ships from Africa docked, bringing hundreds of men, women, and children into a life of forced labor. Yet, it was also here that many African Americans began their fight for freedom. They worked, they resisted, and they dreamed of a future where they would be free. The Long Wharf thus stands as a stark reminder of the pain of oppression, but also the strength of human spirit. Then, we have the Pinckney Street House, a symbol of the African American community's resilience. This humble dwelling served as a sanctuary for those who dared to stand against the institution of slavery. It was a home, a meeting place, and a beacon of hope for many. Its walls have heard the whispers of revolution, and its rooms have seen the planning of daring escapes. It was within these walls that African Americans found the courage to challenge their oppressors and fight for their rights. These landmarks are not just buildings or locations. They are the embodiment of a community's journey from struggle to triumph. 
They are the physical manifestation of the dreams, the hopes, and the courage of those who dared to stand up against the chains of slavery. They are the silent testament to the resilience of a people who refuse to be broken. And so, as we walk the streets of Boston today, we are treading on hallowed ground. Every brick, every stone, echoes with the voices of those who dared to dream of freedom. These landmarks stand as a testament to the African American community's enduring fight for freedom. The 1780s saw a series of court cases that led to the recognition that slavery was incompatible with the state constitution. This was a time of enlightenment, a time where the winds of change began to blow, challenging the status quo and laying the groundwork for the abolition of slavery. Among the most significant of these cases was the famed Quark Walker case. This case unfolded in Massachusetts, revolving around a man named Quark Walker, who had been promised freedom by his master, but was denied it upon his master's death. Walker didn't take this lying down, he took his case to court, boldly standing up against the oppressive system of slavery. In a remarkable turn of events, the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court ruled in Walker's favor. Chief Justice William Cushing, in his decision, stated that a state of slavery was inconsistent with our own conduct and constitution. This ruling was a beacon of hope, a victory not just for Walker, but for all those enslaved. But the struggle didn't end there. Numerous other court cases were fought in the 1780s, each one chipping away at the institution of slavery. These cases were not just about individual freedom, they were about the collective liberation of a people. Every victory in the courtroom was a step forward towards equality, a step closer to the abolition of slavery. These court cases were an expression of the resilience and tenacity of those who were enslaved. They showed that the fight for freedom was not just fought on the battlefield, but also in the courtroom. They provided a legal foundation for the abolition of slavery, setting legal precedents that would be used in future fights for freedom. These court cases were pivotal in the fight against slavery, marking a significant step towards freedom. They showed us that change is possible, that injustice can be challenged, and that freedom is a right, not a privilege. And so the wheels of justice began to turn, slowly but surely towards a future free from the shackles of slavery. The contributions of these early African American leaders have left an indelible mark on American history. Their courage, their resilience, their unwavering belief in the ideals of freedom and equality have shaped the very fabric of our nation. These freedom fighters of the 18th century, individuals like Crispus Attucks, Prince Hall, and Phyllis Wheatley were not just bystanders in the making of America. They were active participants, molding the narrative, challenging the status quo. They stood tall against oppressive institutions, their voices echoing in the chambers of justice, demanding the freedom they were denied. Their struggle was not in vain. Their efforts laid the groundwork for the abolition of slavery, setting the stage for a seismic shift in societal norms. The court cases of the 1780s, where the incompatibility of slavery with the state constitution was recognized, was a testament to their relentless fight. Their actions sowed the seeds of the civil rights movement, a movement that would bloom in the 20th century, a testament to their enduring spirit. The legacy of these freedom fighters is not confined to the pages of history books. It lives on today in every cry for justice, every stand against oppression, every fight for equality. Their spirit reverberates in the actions of modern day activists, in the voices that continue to challenge, continue to demand change. The landmarks of their struggle, like the Pinckney Street House and the Long Wharf, stand as reminders of their journey, their fight, their triumph. They are symbols of a past that has shaped the present and will continue to influence the future. In the face of adversity, these African-American leaders stood firm, their fight for freedom echoing through the centuries, reminding us of the enduring spirit of resilience and courage. Their legacy is a beacon, a guiding light, a reminder that the fight for freedom, for justice, for equality, is a fight that must be carried forward from generation to generation.